So this is the case where the, the products are kind of ahead of the industry. And so they're struggling. This has never happened before. We're like a whole science is, oops, I don't want to be a slave to the algorithm. I don't want to have to have a million followers before anybody finds us. Welcome to Squaring the Circle. This is part five and the final part to our entrepreneurial tech trailblazing series. In this part, tech entrepreneurial veteran Bob Butler discusses his latest venture, Nutra Matters, a nonprofit organization that he founded to make modern health research accessible to the public. Through this case study, we cover how to run a business in the modern day, find out how contemporary and outdated research can impact your business, and more. Let's get to it. Would you like to talk about your current venue right now, the Nutrimeter? Sure. Matters. Well, thank you for the opportunity. I want to make sure that you we, we give you ample time to speak about that because it's so exciting. Well, I feel like this. Uh, I feel like I'm on Jimmy Kimmel, and you finally gave me a chance to talk about my new book. <laughs> but we we should not forget about Intake Health, and I don't know where it stands. Well, I love but... Intake Health. In intake Health is is great. Uh, it, it's happening right now. It's in process, so. You know, I don't really know where it's going to be, but great people, great idea. It's all about health metrics, being able to instantly know if you're healthy or doing something wrong, because the more you know about nutrition and caring for your body, you realize life is a batch process. Every day you do a bunch of stuff that's either good or bad for you. It's what you do every day that counts. Fasting for three days next week or, you know, taking two days off to recover. All that's helpful, but what matters is what you do every day. Where intake health comes in is you don't get your blood work every six months and realize, oh, I'm eating too much you know, meat or not eating enough. You realize that, okay, had a little too many sweets yesterday or didn't hydrate enough or not getting enough of this kind of nutrition or that nutrition. I really hate the term biohacking, and I encourage people to stay away from from all the biohacking stuff. But the idea of biohacking is the idea you can really fine tune your life on a daily basis. And you may not extend your life to the extent you believe that's genetically determined, but you can extend your health span. And that's mean how many days you feel good. And I've got plenty of health problems, but I feel mm -hmm. good every day. And, and I'll tell you, living a long time feeling lousy, is nowhere near as good as living a short time feeling great. And to feel great, you've got to do good stuff every day. And Intake Health is a, a startup with a whole wonderful set of ideas, some of which are starting to work about basically able to get real-time information. And there's plenty of other companies that daily uh, monitor your, your blood sugar, monitor a whole bunch of wearables, Apple and Garmin are giving you your pulse rates and oxygen. So there's this whole world of daily health monitoring that is struggling and is nascent, but uh, really the, the problem is the whole rest of the equation, the, the, the education, the, the experts, the research, the doctors, the nutritionists, none of them have yet adopted the understanding of how important daily monitoring is. So people aren't being told how important it is. So this is the case where the, the products are kind of ahead of the industry. And so they're struggling because you have to convince people that you need to know whether you're hydrated or not every hour of every day. You need to know whether your heart is recovering quickly from exercise every hour of every day. So it's a struggling industry, but these will catch up. And the, the problem there that I'm focusing on is how behind the science and the technology, the ambient knowledge people have on the street about their health. The scientists have really had a lot of breakthroughs on what is healthy, what's healthy to eat, what's healthy to do, but none of what the science has discovered is getting out there. And this is frustrating a lot of scientists and a lot of people. Last year, the National Institute of Health did a study and, and nutrition is unique among all the sciences, because you can't do nutrition experiments on people. You can do cancer, you can do all kinds of experiments on sick people because the risk of the experiment is offset by the benefit of healing them. But since 
obesity problems aren't really considered a health issue. You can't experiment. Nutrition is uniquely problematic in terms of applying science. The National Institute of Health did a study. It says, okay, the day a scientist proves some new concept and does a double-blind random controlled study, gets it published in a peer-reviewed journal, a second scientist confirms it and gets studied in a peer-reviewed journal. And so now we know that that's reliable new insight. The National Institute of Health has determined it takes 17 years from that moment before a doctor will tell you that new information. With genetic engineering and all of the new science, the last five years have completely rewritten the entire understanding of nutrition. And we're waiting for another 12 years before anyone's going to tell us about it. When you realize that 8 million people die or hospitalized every year through metabolic disease, 17 years is 136 million people are affected by this. And let's say you could cut that down by 10 years. If you could get the word out 10 years earlier and say seven years instead of 17, you would affect 80 million lives. And that's what the Nutrition Matters Foundation is trying to do. We're not inventing anything. We don't have a mm -hmm. diet. We don't have anything we're championing. What we're trying to do, like Best Thinking, we're a publishing company. We're trying to get the new science in the hands of people much sooner. But every single thing we talk about will be common knowledge sooner or later. And we're trying to make it sooner. Early adopters will come now. They will read. They will start changing the lives of their own and their loved ones. They will also help spread the message. Correct. And this is whispering in people's ear. And I've been through all this. You know, I've had all the metabolic disease, health problems, including obesity, and I beat them all years ago. And so, you know, our claim to fame is we're the ones who've really done it. We're not the scientists. We're not the nutritionists. Mm. But we have a unique window into the science. Because a lot of people don't know this, but LexisNexis is actually not a separate company. There's just a group within Elsevier. And Elsevier is the world's largest scientific publisher. So pretty much every journal and every medical book is published by Elsevier. So everyone who is smart in medical science and many other sciences is a, you know, active member of the Elsevier family. Because I'm a Elsevier retiree, I'm able to access a lot of this research on a very favorable basis. And even though I'm an economist and mathematician, there's a lot of research methodologies in economics. I'm pretty able to look at research of any science and understand whether it was well done, whether the statistics are right, and so on. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you there's a lot of studies that shouldn't be trusted out there because the scientists cook the books as much as the finance people do. They just do it with statistics. And over half the studies are financed by the food industry. So there's you know, cognitive bias in the fundamental designs of the studies. And so because I have a couple of patents back from the 80s in the biotechnology days when I was working on bioreactors, I was granted access to something called ResearchGate. ResearchGate.net is this amazing social network of all the scientists of the world. It's kind of like their private invitation only Facebook. So when I read a study, I can actually ask a follow-up question of the actual scientist who did this study. So I found myself in this really unique position to access this science kind of ahead of most people. I mentioned earlier how early in life you are the entrepreneur, a little later in life you're the advisor to entrepreneurs, well, even later in life, you become the guy with the nonprofit company. <laughs> I'm in that stage now. <laughs> but I did find I had two really unique capabilities. One, I had a little bit better than average access to the science, but a little bit better than average understanding of what's good or bad studies. I had myself figured out how to beat metabolic disease and reverse it. I also really was was able to understand how it could be used. I mean, how this information could be put to use through my own experiences. With the extra access from ResearchGate, I said, well, 
I think we're in a pretty good position to put a team together and try to reduce that 17 years to seven years. And that's basically what it is. We're, we're trying to get the message out sooner. And it's all the bootstrap and the startup stuff you do, but we have a, a large endowment for 10 years. Uh, we told people our story that I'm telling you now, and we had a lot of people think it was a good idea. So we raised some money and we're functioning on that money. We're using Tisby to design our website. And I can't tell you how well it's going. Um, and so we have a great team. And, and, and basically, we have to build a mechanism by which people can get this information. The only thing that's different for us is that for the first time, I'm kind of acting as an entrepreneur, and we're just not trying to go viral. Our attitude is, well, how many people that you save their lives or their health or their extend their health span is worth the effort? If you change 10 people's lives, is mm -hmm. that worth doing? 100, 100,000? No, yes. And once you kind of get relieved mm -hmm. of that pressure to have 5 million followers, and you're just doing something you really passionately believe in and just try to do it well. And you're working with a team you really enjoy and you're doing something to make a difference. I mean, I made my mark with the 30 million metric tons of sequestered carbon, but I still feel that there's you know, work to be done. And now we're doing it through trying to solve one very specific problem. And that is to get the science in people's hands. And, and there's just so much wrong with what we're being told. And the biggest story we're being told is that you can't solve this. There's something called a merchants of doubt philosophy. And I'm old enough to remember when smoking tobacco was healthy. And I, I lived through the whole transition from when doctors were smoking with their stethoscopes. Marcus Welby would bring you in to give you your test results and he'd pour you a bourbon and offer you a cigarette. From that to where we are today is very much like a process we're going to go through with nutrition. And when they first started to sure. get information that smoking was hazardous, the smoking company got all their experts to say it wasn't. So the, I remember all these commercials where... Dr. Brown smokes camels without the filters because they relax him and relaxing lowers your blood pressure and that makes your heart. They, for about five years, you have these dueling experts and pretty quickly people started to believe that smoking wasn't good for them. And so people who are in the position of really trying to maintain the status quo, sugar industry did the same thing realizes you can't win by dueling experts. You can't win by saying you have studies that are better than their studies. You have to win by flooding the market with so much conflicting information that people just kind of throw their hands up. And that's called, and there's, there's a whole book and documentary about this called Merchants of Doubt, which explains what the tobacco industry did. And the uh, sugar industry did the same thing. There's a great Netflix documentary called Sugar Coated. So this is a standard operating procedure. If you have a massive trillion dollar industry like the food industry, like the sugar industry, like the tobacco industry, that suddenly you're making a product that's deemed to be unhealthy, you go to this merchants of doubt strategy. What's happening right now, Coca-Cola is funding hundreds of studies to convince people that you can count calories to lose weight because if you fail, it's your fault. It's not the toxicity of their product. And so the information we're getting is just, is just mm -hmm. terrible. And people are throwing their hands up yeah. and saying, I can't solve this problem. And what we're really stressing is that is that they can. And we, we have this very simple little test. We say, do you know sleep is important to you? And almost everybody said, yeah, getting a good night's sleep is important. Okay. If you drink a Red Bull or have a cup of coffee with caffeine right before you go to bed, will it affect your sleep? And most people say, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't do that. And then you say, okay, can you not have a Red Bull or a cup of caffeinated coffee right before you go to bed? And they say, well, yeah, of course I can. I can, I know better not to do that. And we say, well, why, how? 
Well, because I did it and I experienced it and I know better. There it is. There's the answer. So what you have to do is reduce all of your nutritional and lifestyle decisions to something where you believe through your own experience that if you do this, something bad will happen. And people, once you kind of quit talking about all the studies and all the experts and all this is best and that is best and say, this is hurting you. This is how it's hurting you. This is what you're doing that's causing it. This is how you can identify mm -hmm. how it's hurting you. And this is how you can identify stopping doing that will stop hurting you. And we're trying to reduce all of the nutrition and exercise decisions to something like that. We call it actionable knowledge. And it's surprisingly difficult because, you know, I write a lot of the content and I keep wanting to say, well, this study says this and this study says that. And, and we don't do that. We don't use any scientific language. We don't refer to any studies. We have a whole research section, just so you know. Yes, we have thousands of studies this is based on, if you really got to see it. But we're just telling a story. This is what happens when you make certain choices. And go ahead and try it and see what happens to you. And we have no gravitas. We, we have no importance. We have no backing. Our only story is we've done this. It works for us. But don't, don't believe us. Just give it a try. And no one's ever mm -hmm. tried to do that before. And when we talk to other companies about building our website and helping with our online courses, they just said, well, we'll throw up a brochure site and we'll put it on YouTube. I said, no, 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 it's not YouTube. I don't want to be a slave to the algorithm. I don't want to have to have a million followers before anybody finds us. I want to help 10 people, 500 people, 1,000 mm -hmm. people. Tisby goes, well, we have an online course program called vPortal that works just like YouTube. I'm like, bingo. <laughs> and so this was another example. Um, and you guys don't do brochure websites. You do functioning website websites with business rules, with databases. And they're very different. Mm -hmm. It's a very different process to build a brochure website from building a business rule-driven website. We're working with Sisby once again to, doing something that nobody's ever tried before. And we're getting it done because we really understand what we need to do. And we um, we really are focusing on executing, you know, delivering this information in a way free of the tyranny of algorithms, free of the requirement for massive social media success before we can be listened to, free of the requirement of yeah. massive amounts of gravitas. And um, because by the time you get to be a Harvard nutrition specialist, you're already locked in to some philosophy. You you, you have a stake, you, your cognitive bias overwhelms your judgment. And since all the new sciences, I mean, everything yeah. we know about nutrition is pretty much wrong. And so we're all having to learn again. And this has never happened before. We're like a whole science is oops. I mean, the last time this has happened is when Galileo pointed his telescope into the heavens and we found out the Earth wasn't the center of the solar system. And so one of our sayings is nutrition has had a Galileo moment. I want to say, Bob, this was amazing. Um, I expected okay. a lot, but I got much more than I expected from this conversation personally. I kind of got myself re-inspired. I want to start more companies. I want to see if you may be my partner, teacher, or advisor, or board member, which we already discussed. I just uh, thank you for the wisdom, and I want to have a lot of thought about what we just learned. I wish you the best health and much inspiration and success. Th th thank you so much for also being our true customer, which we love, and we will be true to you. With that, we're going to yeah. close. Yeah, this has just been such an enlightening conversation. Well, thank you for the invite. Thank you for all the great work over the years. And, uh, you know, all of the successes I've had, you know, have been the result of people like yourself helping uh, with the vision. And all the failures have been completely my own. And so uh, thanks again for having me. And I look forward to doing this again. 
Thank you for joining us for the Entrepreneurial Tech Trailblazing series. If you haven't yet, check out the previous parts of the series. They contain valuable insights that will benefit business owners and entrepreneurs alike. For regular updates, follow Squaring the Circle on Spotify, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in our next series.